Hey internet, it's me. Um, th this is weird uh, because I haven't done this in a while, but today I'm going to review a video game. Now, before I get into the game itself, let me just explain that when you collect a lot of games and you have just a huge collection like this, you know, you end up with a lot of like the rare titles that a lot of collectors go for, um, things that impress the layperson, like a, a boxed Hagane or Chrono Trigger, or a copy of, um, what is it, uh, Flintstones at Dinosaur Peak or whatever. Uh, you get these games and people are like, wow, that's really cool, it's a rare game, it's expensive, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's in a million other people's collections too. Uh, so it's not as fun. Like, it's cool to have, you know, I'm happy I have those games, but it's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing in my collection is always the really unique and weird stuff. The the uh, conversation starters. Uh, for example, like I have test carts for North and South and Silkworm and Flea for the NES. Uh, these are all prototypes used when creating the game to test them out before they were production ready. Um, no one else has these. I'm the only one that has these. Uh, because they only need one prototype to test the game. So, these are unique. These are really cool and special to me. Uh, also, I have, like, you know, the press cart of Trophy. So, again, before the official game was out, this was number six. It's numbered. You can see it there. Well, you can't see it from where you are, but it's there. Trust me. Um, but this was sent out to, you know, reviewers online to play what's close to a final build of the game and test it out and tell people how it is and, you know, build hype for it. Uh, and again, not a whole lot of these. They're, I don't even know how many they made to send out to press, but it wasn't a lot. Uh, so that's really cool. I've got uh, McDonald Land signed by the actor that played Ronald McDonald's in a lot of the commercials and stuff. Uh, and even a little certificate of authenticity. Uh, so, you know, stuff like that, that's really fun. Uh, and I'm going to keep going because now I'm just kind of in a bragging mode. <laughs> I have a, there's a game called Ployed. Uh, it's an indie game. It came out recently. Um, but I have, not only is this a prototype copy, but, uh, again, you can't see it from where the camera is. Even if I do this, you probably can't tell. Um, I'll, I'll take a picture and then put it on the screen. But the cartridge and the board inside are both signed by members of the dev team, which I thought was really awesome. And in a similar vein, this is Dragon Feet, a indie game that I've talked about before. I've both reviewed it and talked to the developer on this channel, but uh, he signed the back of it. As far as I know, I'm the only person that asked him to do that, so this is the only signed copy of this game, and there's not even that many copies in general anyway. So, again, just a lot of really unique stuff. And I mention all that partially to brag, because I'm very proud of my collection, but partially to introduce what is now one of my new favorite unique collectibles in my collection, and that is this. Uh, what this is, is a custom-made wooden box, uh, which is also a limited edition copy of, if you can't read it on the box, um, you certainly can't read it on the cart now, but uh, Swords and Runes 3 for the NES. Um, there are not many of these collector's editions. Originally, the developer, Bo, actually only made 10, uh, and he sold them on his website. And then I came along, uh, after those 10 were sold out, and found his website and purchased one, not knowing that they were sold out. And uh, after a lot of back and forth with him, he actually decided to just make uh, a, a few more of these limited editions. And so yours truly is the proud owner of one. Uh, unfortunately, that does mean if you're watching this and don't have one but want one, you can't get one. Uh, they are sold out. He has sold all the ones that he made. Uh, actually, the website where you find them is still active and does not show them as sold out. So, Bo, if you're watching this, you should probably take that down. Uh, I'll email you the link to the website because I found it again. It's still live, so, you know. But, uh, yeah. This is just a really cool, unique thing to have in my collection. Like with the other games I talked about and showed, there's not a lot of these. So, while Swords and Runes 3 
is probably not going for as much money as my complete in box Chrono Trigger. Um, this is way cooler to me. This is way more special in my collection because it's just, it's so unique and so cool. Uh, plus, like I said, I've been talking back and forth with the developer. So just, you know, having that pseudo relationship with him in addition to having the game just makes it even cooler. Uh, definitely super proud to have this. But now that I've just gushed about my own collection for long enough, uh, let's actually try the game. Okay, so here we are. Um, the first thing I'll say is, as I'm sure you can see from the screen, the graphics are a little bit basic, but at the same time, I don't know, they kind of work? Now, <clears throat> Um, it doesn't look like a lot of, like, a, especially the later stage NES games where they had just, you know, multi-level backgrounds and all of that. Um, actually, it kind of looks like it could be, like, an Atari 7800 or maybe a really old home computer game. Actually, it has a similar vibe just as far as, like, the simple approach to the graphics as, uh, like, Castle of the Winds did or Swords and Serpents, which was an amazing game on the NES. But anyway, so this is the game. I do like there's a name in the top right corner of uh, what appears to be a walled castle city here. Okay, so you can walk into people and talk to them. I like that it has the title of the person up at the top. That's kind of cool. Just an extra little level of detail. <clears throat> do they say the same thing if you talk to them twice? They do, okay. So each person's individually programmed. Okay, so that's fun. Um, so you just move around with the D-pad, basic enough. If I walk toward an arrow. Oh, get an intro. I will say, um, and I'll play some of it in the recording here, but uh, I'm kind of digging the music. Like, it's not... I don't know how to describe it. It's exactly what I want from a chiptune. It's not overly complex and complicated. It doesn't sound like someone, you know, took an orchestral score and um, demade it as like an 8-bit chiptune type thing. But, uh, it, I don't know, it sounds good. It's appealing. I like it. Okay, I walked through that teepee and I think I picked it up. I don't know what's happening. Do I have an inventory? Nope. Oh, they came back. What is this? Okay. Hit A. That's my status screen. B tells me what all the icons are, okay. I don't think his TPs are supposed to disappear like that, but they do. I like how some of the trees are up in the border. It just adds a little, I don't know. In, in a lot of games, you get borders that just feel unnatural. Like, you know the levels have to have borders. It can't scroll forever. Uh, but sometimes the way they do it just doesn't always look great. Uh, it was one of the things I liked about the original Legend of Zelda is that the borders would be made by like uh, mountain cliffs or water or bushes and as you went to the next screen the uh, bushes or water or cliff faces in that screen would match up to the screen you came from. So it didn't look like an artificial border, it looked like actual landscape that was just naturally moving. Um, so I really liked that and that's my way of saying that I like even though the borders are artificial and created and like you can see where the limits are, uh, with the trees bleeding into the border like that, it just, it looks a little more natural, if that makes sense. Milady, you need more allies. I'm a lady. That's fun. Oh, I'm fighting. Okay. So, um, okay. So I, I did look a bit of this up online. And, uh, so there's the plus sign next to me with the little red dot in it. That's my health. Uh, as the red dot grows, that means the damage I've taken has grown. 
And then there's the two enemies on the left. Uh, one has an up arrow and a circle next to it. The other has an up arrow and a square next to it. Um, if I want to attack those enemies, uh, that's how I do it. If I hold up and hit B, it attacks the guy with the square. If I hold up and hit A, it attacks the one with the circle. Uh, also, you'll see on the right side there, it says 2x circle and 2x square. Uh, <clears throat> That's saying that if I hit circle, which is A, twice, then I can heal, like I just did. And you see the red dot and my little cross goes down. Um, and the other one is if I hit B twice, it'll do something. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure what that icon is. Uh, but it'll do something. And doing something is good. Also, you'll see there's the arrow moving back and forth. Uh, that's to indicate whose turn it is. So right now it's pointing at the enemy, he attacked me, my life is very low. He attacked again, I'm gonna heal again. Now the arrow's at me, I'm gonna attack him again. There's a shield icon, so if he blocked it. Shield once again. Boy, he is just blocking everything, and I am getting reamed here. Okay, that one had a sword, that one hit. Come on, let's go, oh. Why can we not kill this guy? Okay, keep healing. I'm gonna try this other one, what does that do? I don't know what that did. Yeah, I don't know what that icon means. Okay, so I won. They died. I'm the best. Oh, crap. Okay, so if I go back in here, I have to attack them again. So, I should probably stop coming in here. Well, live and learn, I guess. That's fine, just block my attacks. <clears throat> I will say, and I mentioned it earlier, uh, Swords and Serpents, this battle system kind of reminds me of that, because it had a very turn-based RPG battle system too. Um, and it was kind of like a D&D, &D where you could equip different items to, you know, raise your various stats, and then that would change how you did in battle. I died. Uh, the red X next to me means that I died. Uh, also, I do like, while you're on the home screen here, you can see in the bottom left, it says LE number 02. Uh, so that indicates that this cartridge is one of the limited editions. I don't know if two is its number two out of all the ones that he did, or if two indicates that this is the second run of limited editions that were made. But either way, I really like that not only is the box obviously custom made uh, and handmade, which is awesome, but in the programming of the game it indicates too that hey, this is a limited edition. It's just nice because like if ever this were split up and you know the cart somehow was no longer with the box someone couldn't just stick any random copy of this game in this box and say oh this is the limited edition because when you put that cartridge in it wouldn't show that uh so let's try the game again get a little more here now i talked to these guards but what if i just go in the castle i can't okay so if i go over here What's this guy say? Okay, so I'm fighting zombies and orcs. That's fun. So that one guy on the other screen said, I need more allies. So can I like recruit some of these folks? I'm scared of the fish. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to. <clears throat> okay, there's no boats today. Can't go that way. Uh, I went to the forest last time. That led to death. I don't know who I am. There's nothing to belong to. What is my destiny? Ugh! Oh, sounds like me in real life. I don't know either, dude. Oh, what was that? I don't know, but if I unpause, it comes back. Here's my inventory screen again. 
Uh, I have a sword with a zero next to my little icon there, so I'm guessing I didn't get any cool equipment. Okay, so I can't go that way either, no ships. I think I have to go through the woods. Oh, let me try this. Does that go somewhere? It does, okay. Ooh, this TP has someone in it. Cool. Oh, this one did too. Okay. Oh, and they both joined my party. Oh, check that out. I have people now. These trees are random. Can I go in there? Oh, I can. Okay. So I have a full party now. Cool. Half orc leader is immune to doom. Got it. Okay. Now that I have a full party, let's go try that woods encounter again. I am gonna mess someone up. Oh, I didn't even have to fight him that time. <clears throat> Thank you for playing. You're welcome. Thank you for sending me this copy of this game. I mean, I paid for it, but still. Much appreciated. Okay, here we go. Oh. So, apparently, the amount of enemies scales up with my party size. Well, maybe not, because I had two enemies before only one person, so maybe this is just supposed to be four. Okay, so one guy's dead. Okay. Um... <coughs> oh! Okay, so that's what that other icon is. It's run away. It's a flea icon. Now I know. Did not mean to do that, but oh god, there's six now. Come on, you guys gotta be stronger than that. Kill these fools. There we go, one down. That dude needs to heal. Ah! Crap. I tried to attack someone that is already dead. So yeah, this battle system, like, you really have to pay attention and think. You can't just button mash. Uh, you can't be absent-minded or else things are not going to go well. You need to actually pay attention and remember what enemies can you still attack, what ones are already dead. Um, yeah, I like that they're... Seems to be a good amount of stuff going on here. It's more complicated than it seems. Like, don't let the graphics throw you. This is like a well-made, complicated game. I like that. Okay, you guys in the back. So what happens if I have a full party and one of my dudes dies? Let's see, I'm not gonna heal anymore. I wanna find out. Come on, attack that same guy again. <clears throat> I don't know if one of my dudes dies, but then I win, does he come back for the next battle? Or is he just dead? Well, we're not going to find out now, because I won. Let's go in this castle. More folks to talk to. Each room keeper has unique power. Ooh, what's this? Okay. Oh, another 
fun little forest. Oh, by walking into that tree, <clears throat> I got new information. Walking into this tree, tell me a battle. Okay, come on. Kill my blue dude. I want to know what happens. I'm going to learn some things here. I wonder how to decide who the enemies are going to attack. I wonder if it's random or if there's some sort of like threat rating. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm just asking out loud. I do like to, uh, like I mentioned before, these are simple graphics, but if you'll notice, each of my characters, well at least three of them, have different icons, and then the two that match are different colors. Um, and likewise, there's been multiple icons for the enemies already, so I like that there's a variety of things going on. It's not just the same thing repeating over and over. Well, that was rude. Okay, so I found my first boss. He says it's time for me to die. I disagree, but at the same time, kind of want to let one of my characters die just to see what happens. Okay, so I can keep battling. So it's one of those RPGs where as long as one party member's still alive, your party's still good. A lot of blocking going on on the enemy side there, I gotta say. Not a fan. I do wish they'd hurry up and die. <clears throat> Balls. Didn't mean to do that. Oof. Okay. I don't think I'm going to win this fight. If I uh, had to guess, not going in my favor so far. Again, I really dig the music. Like, it's kind of simple, it's kind of repetitive, but not in a bad way. You know, it's just, it's a nice little tune. Okay, well, we're not going to find out what happens if you win a battle with one of your party members dead, because, uh, all my party members are going to be dead. <clears throat> That's just how this is going to work. And dead. Although there are codes, so that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, that's the game. I just wanted to partially show off and partially talk about just a cool little indie game because I love indie games, especially for the NES. I have so many. Um, I like supporting the indie developers. I like seeing new games come out for these old consoles. And this is just one of those that I really wanted to show off and talk about. So yeah, um, like I said, you're not gonna be able to get a limited edition one, but I know there are other non-limited edition copies out in the world, um, probably in bigger number. So if you really wanna get the game, and I recommend it, it is fun, um, go and try and look one up. And other than that, I don't know what else to say, so I'm just not gonna say anything, and instead I'm gonna go. Bye!